Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's your friend Moonhorse here, back with another story. I know you're excited, so am I, so let's get right into it. This is from Reddit user A Silver Burb. I still like your name. NSFW, the evil nice guy. Oh! Oh, I'm nervous. Let's keep going. Hello, Moon Horse and Company. It's just me here tonight, but hi! I'm sure everybody else very much appreciates it. Thank you so much for reading my last story. So, this one's a little messed up, but I hope it's worth a read. I'm sure it will be, and thank you so much for sending it in. To be fair, I'm not entirely sure to count this person as a nice guy or more of an incel. All I know is that he shares some of the worst possible qualities of both parties. But I want to say that he leans more towards just being a horrible person overall. As much as I wish all of this was just some sort of fabricated story, I promise you, it's 100% true. And yes, I was an idiot to put up with this guy. I honestly have no clue if he's on Reddit, but just to be safe, I'll refrain from using his actual name. We'll just call him M. After moving to a new state, I joined an anime group that would gather at our local comic shop to watch, well, different anime. Everyone was really nice, and I even made friends with the organizer and started having a movie night at my apartment monthly as one of our gatherings. It all seemed pretty peaceful until a guy named M joined for one of the movie nights. There were people who came and went to all the group gatherings, so yeah, nothing really seemed off about him at first. M was a beanpole, short blonde hair, glasses, acne, and usually wore band t-shirts. M joined everyone and awkwardly introduced himself once we got ready to head inside to watch the movie. All went well, and he started showing up regularly to the gatherings. We even started talking to one another and exchanged phone numbers. One day he messages me and asks me to go to an amusement park with him as friends. Seeing as I just kind of lost my girlfriend for over a year and he just lost a job for his reasoning of we could use some fun seemed pretty innocent enough. He insisted on paying well over $150 for special passes that gave us unlimited rides and massive amounts of credits towards the arcade. Usually I'd feel really uncomfortable about being bought something so expensive, but he had insisted, and I was in a kind of fuck it mood, so I saw no issue at the time with letting it slide in the moment. We had a good time and ended up hanging out a few more times after that. He'd try to get me to hang out at his place once or twice, but eh, my mom didn't really like the idea of me being alone with this guy, and I was starting to agree with her. Things started to go downhill when he finally asked me to be his girlfriend citing that he thought of the time at the amusement park as more than friends. I was still rebounding hard after my first experience with true love. Suck it, T-Beard. So, I stupidly agreed. It was fine, until my dad, who was just happy seeing me dating a guy and being in a straight relationship, he ended up telling M, uh, you can stay as long as you want. And after that, M ended up staying at my house for over a fucking week, only leaving to go to classes at his university. He never showered the entire time and took up a habit of tickling me whenever I wasn't smiling. Oh. This was actually traumatizing. I didn't like to be touched, and he would then get pissed off when I was grabbing at his shirt to try and get him off of me, stating that I was going to rip his shirt. I told him to stop tickling me then, but no, he didn't stop his bullshit. He also seemed overly happy with dating me, but only because oh, those idiots said I would never get a girlfriend. At this point, my room reeked like guy stink, and I just wanted to get some fresh air. So I suggested we go to the mall to window shop with some friends of mine. We end up going to a particular store that is known for selling fake poop as well as sexual items. If you know the store, you know it. I think I do, and I believe it rhymes with fencers. He pulls me aside and pointed to some rope, stating that that's what he was into. I just gave a half-hearted, oh, that's nice. After that, he seemed a bit pissed off that other people were there with us. While we're all waiting for my mom to pick us up outside, we all sit down in the grass to chat and, you know, just kind of shoot the shit for a while. That's when he suddenly thought it was a good idea to pin me down and hold me there. 
The rest of us tried to laugh it off, but I was humiliated internally. I hated this, but I didn't want to screw up the good mood, and I tried to forget about it once I was let go. Everyone else went home, except for M, of course. He suggested we go for a walk. It was dark, and the heat of the southwest became more mild, so I agreed. This is your warning. Things get massively fucked up at this point in the story. You've been warned. Seriously. Oh, do I get the impression that I'm going to get really pissed off at this? Because I'm starting to get that impression I might get really pissed off. <laughs> this might be a fun one. Em and I walked around until ending up at a playground that was deserted after dark. We're sitting and talking, and it always seems that the dark and silence of night can cause people to confess some really messed up things. I will never forget what he told me that night. M looked at me and said, I can't leave the country, and the reason is because I'm a registered sex offender. The only reason I'm not in jail is because it happened when I was 17 and at the police station on my 18th birthday. He had just turned 18 a few months prior. Incest runs in my family, and I raped my little sister, and she was only seven. Our parents caught me, and even if I could go back, I would do it again. <clears throat> he was crying when he said this. It doesn't help that he then went on to voice, I'm worried I can't see her until she turns 18. But she's starting to act like a slut. This fucker was a pedophile who raped his own younger sister and had no remorse. <clears throat> After this point, I finally grew the spine to tell him to go home. He thankfully did. I broke up with him over the phone that night. That should have been the end of it. And after a dozen messages, ranging from sadness to anger to apologies, he finally gave up and left me alone. I spent all night cleaning my room and trying to get the smell out. He showed up to the next meetup at the comic store and just kept staring at me. I tried to ignore him and watch whatever anime they put in the DVD player, and he started texting me halfway through. You could be nice and say hello. I messaged him back only to tell him to leave me alone. You could still be nice. Leave me alone. After that, he finally seemed to get the message and stopped texting me. After about a month of radio silence, he messages me out of nowhere. Strangely enough, this was one of the extremely rare times that I was home by myself after dark, and he messages me out of the blue. After spamming my phone with messages about wanting to talk, I told him to say whatever he wanted to say, but he insisted on talking in person. Now, this could have been my severe anxiety, but your boy was now freaking me the fuck out. Out of any time, he just happens to want to talk in person when I'm home alone after dark. Yeah, no. I proceeded to make sure that all the windows were locked and threatened to call the police if he showed up. M replied back with, you know my history, why would I do that? I told him I wasn't kidding. I was texting my friends as all this was happening, and they told me to call my mom. She came back to get me, and I went to IHOP with them. It took her threatening him over text for him to finally back off. That was several years and phone numbers ago. I don't think I can find the old screenshots anywhere, but I hope you take my word and the truth behind this story. This was the only time I believe I met someone truly evil. <sighs> oh. mm. Remember that thing you said about how I might get really angry? Yeah. Yeah, it's there. It's, uh... It's really there. Oh, my God. You did 100% the right thing by getting away from this motherfucker as fast as humanly possible. Because there's nothing, nothing that can justify his fucking actions. Nothing. And the fact that he tried to... The fact that he tried to explain all this shit, like, oh, it just runs in my family. No. 
No, fuck you. It does not. That is not a thing. And then this whole thing of like, oh, well, you know, she's just turning into a slut. And like, fuck you. Fuck you again. Fuck anyone who looks like you. And fuck anyone who thinks they might. You're just the worst kind of fucking person. You know, and the fact that you're walking around on a fucking technicality to just be like, oh, well, I didn't have to see any jail time, but I'm a registered sex offender. <laughs> Believe me. Jail time is absolutely something you should have seen. The audacity of this motherfucker. To just be like, oh, well, you know. Uh, it, it just happened. I, but to display this whole thing of, like, trying to get sympathy out of you. I think that's the worst part. That. Oh, oh. Fucking, you guys know this. I, this is this is not a secret. You guys all know this. I fucking hate pedophiles. Hate. And then that this guy's not only a pedophile but a fucking rapist. It's like a combination of things I really fucking hate. It's like a weird conjoiner of things that just make me want to set it on fire. With you know the best kind of flamethrower. If you're gonna destroy something that amazingly awful. You have to use only the best. Basically, load up the most expensive sports car you can with as much napalm as possible and leave a brick on the accelerator just for him. Because that's exactly what he deserves. Oh, oh fuck. I am so sorry you had to put up with this guy. Oh, my God. But you absolutely did 100% the right thing. Just the immediate bailout cut all ties, get as far away as humanly possible. I am proud of you of that. I am very proud of you for that. Just not even giving this guy an inch. As soon as you knew that he was that fucked up, you knew exactly what to fucking do. Uh, our friend uh, AKBH Writer is actually in the comments, and I just kind of read their comment, so I'm going to read it all to you, because fuck it. Uh, holy hell, I didn't expect to be reading a story about someone so vile. I hope sooner or later, Justice really catches up with him, because scum like this, there's something unforgivably wrong with them. This is like Ted Bundy levels of evil, and I've got to go hit something now. I feel that. I 100% feel that. That's... That's fucked up. That is... A thousand levels of fucked up. I only hope the worst for this guy. I only hope the worst for him. And maybe it is a really good idea that you didn't, you know, say his name. Not just because he might be on Reddit, but because I can imagine I'm not the only one who heard this story and is thinking, you know, he's on the registry. And we know what area he was in. Maybe he needs to be looked up. You shouldn't do that. But maybe you should. But no, you shouldn't. I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying if you thought about it, it happens. But then again, we can't really do that because we don't know his name. And you shouldn't give out his name. Because that's a thing. Not for his sake. Let me clarify. Not for his sake. For your sake. Not just Silver Burp who wrote this. No. Um, for all of your sake. I know. You're just as pissed off as I am. I know. I can fucking... This isn't even live, but I can feel it. I just know that this is going to be one of those... Everybody is just fire in the comments. But... The reason I say that it's not for your sake is because none of you deserve to get in trouble with this fucking shitbag. Yes, he deserves the worst possible thing. And yes, karma should hit him like a fucking freight train being dropped from orbit. But, I don't want any one of you getting hurt in the process. Because you guys are my family and I love you, so you don't deserve that. But, let's just collectively 
take a deep breath and try to wash this out of our system, you know? Just... Believe me, I feel it too. But, if it helps, you should know this. I love you all so very much. This has been one hell of a story. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and end this here. But thank you all for being here. And seriously, take care of yourselves. Don't let scum like this guy try to get into your life. And Silver Burb, I'm really glad you're okay. That's some scary shit. Seriously, take care of yourselves out there, guys. I love you all so very much. I'll see you in the next video.